right, let's do it. <laughs> Welcome to the Comedians of Wrestling podcast slash video podcast this week. I am your host, Dan Black, the Comedians of Wrestling heavyweight champion of the world, Paul. And uh, I'm coming at you this week uh, during quarantine mania. We are in uh, weird times, stressful times. Uh, check out my stress pimple. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, seriously, I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope you're staying inside. I hope your loved ones are doing well. And you're not going stir, stir crazy uh, from all of this um, global pandemonium. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Look, um, I've been thinking about the podcast and how this all relates to this podcast. I've always joked that this podcast is uh, more than a podcast, less than a lifestyle. But what it definitely is, is uh, it definitely is a community or a community, if you will. Um, and I think during this time of social distancing, it's important for us to keep that just physically. Uh, 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 we could be social as much as you want through all this technology. So at Cal, um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of things that I've wanted to do in a long, uh, in, 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 for a long time. Um, I see this as an opportunity for uh, this podcast to make more content and uh, have our passion for what we do come through even more. Uh, so um, we're going to be putting out more Patreon bonus episodes. I started a Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Dan Black Attack. I'm going to be going live on there a bunch. Um, the first time I'm going to be going is uh, Wednesday, which uh, is March 18th, 2020. Uh, I'm going to be going live 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for AEW and NXT, the Wednesday Night Wars, uh, with no audience. Um, and uh, 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 I'm going to post a full schedule coming up about when we're going to be going live and we're going to uh, – uh, do we've already started uh p old pay-per-view network watch along parties we're gonna have more movie dissection episodes uh i'm gonna be streaming 2k20 soon i'm figuring it all out i'm buying equipment um so yeah we're gonna be up in our operations and if you feel inclined to help the podcast out uh during this time if you can do it that would be great join the patreon um there'll be other ways to donate and help out but if you can't because I know these are stressful, crazy times. We're going to be here for you um, to relieve some of that anxiety you're feeling, um, which is, you know, what we do. Um, and, uh, yeah, so remember, uh, here is the first video podcast we're doing. It'll still be available on the main feed. Um, I apologize for some of the audio and some of the technical difficulties during it. We're still getting our footing during this crazy time. We don't have our studio. Uh, I'm using some new equipment and this and that. You understand it. You got it. Point is, is that we're here for you. We're going to be still doing this podcast. We're going to still be going strong. And before the episode starts, featuring my two best friends, Arlen Marmel and Jason Chibiro, uh, with, you know, the Salami Bros, I want to thank a couple people already who have helped out the podcast uh, in all kinds of different ways. Uh, not just monetarily give me advice on how to do all this, uh, deal with all this technology and everything. And so you guys, your Petroniacs, the, the Jabroniacs, you guys make this podcast what it is. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me just to have you guys reach out and, uh, offer your talents to this podcast. I mean, look at this from one of our listeners, Steve Ock Moody, uh, who I want to thank. Um, and I also want to thank Ben Axelrad, Susan Lloyd, uh, uh, Austin Bell, Glenn Smith, uh, Steve Ahmoudi, I already said, Phil Pesapani, Ross Cromaldi. You guys have all been uh, essential in this transition to all the stuff we're going to do. So a schedule coming up of what we're going to be doing, more watch parties, uh, more gaming, and uh, tell me what you want. We're figuring it out as we go. But enjoy this first ever video podcast episode, which are also still available on the uh, regular feed and follow our Twitch channel, rate us five stars, that stuff. It's free. It helps us out a bunch. Uh, so yeah, follow twitch.tv slash Dan Black Attack. Rate us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, hey, cheers up. Kisses. Twitch, Wednesday night, baby. All right. So look, I have some very special guests in not in studio across the country in quarantine mania continues uh right now joining me is 
Uh, the uh, I believe his nickname is the Crown Jew. Uh, the <laughs> the Tech Hundred Thousand there, <laughs> all in Marmel. What is up? Listen, I'm not going to confirm or deny my net worth, but I'm just going to say that that was inaccurate. The, the tech hundred was either too there. high or too low. <laughs> no, I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, it's always millionaire or billionaire. So what about the tech hundred thousand there? What up, Let me put it this way. I, I'm a billionaire that should be a trillionaire. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> are you cutting a pipe bomb? <laughs> this is a pipe bomb right now. <laughs> you're, you're, Arlen, actually, you're a millionaire that should have hair. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, and you heard him here. Uh, Shebs, what's your nickname? Do you have a, do you have a cow nickname? I mean, as of – was that the inaugural Twitch stream the other day that I was on? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm so – I'm curious about your pronunciation of inaugural. Inaugural. He doesn't – think it's valid. that's how Israelis say inaugural. <laughs> and that's how true play of pimps get down with it. So I, I, during the inaugural Twitch stream, it has been revealed that – and Arlen, by the way, how long did it take Dan to set this thing up? Uh, 30 minutes. Too long. Too I long. Mean, All right, so, so on the Twitch – him and Aaron were having a lot of tech kerfuffles, and then I show up for 30 seconds, and I worked out all the kinks, like, live while oh, we were doing yeah, it. yeah, you told me. You're the kink master. <laughs> so then I became the kink master. I also Jason am known Jibiro, as – You heard it here. He is now officially the kink master. <laughs> I am also the needle mover, because just by merit of joining this Twitch stream, the numbers went through the roof. I moved the needle. I mastered the kinks. And then I also hashtag compassionate lover, considerate roommate, good friend. This is, um, this is <laughs> I think you're none of, none of those things, but um, true or false, the kink master sounds like a, a failed WWE gimmick from the mid-90s. No, it's, like it, it. Sounds like a, it sounds like a sex gimp. Like, it sounds like somebody you'd find in Zed's basement in Pulp Fiction. Sure, um, love, love it. Well, okay, guys. So, like I said, we're going to discuss the, uh, we're going to be discussing the, uh, the fate of Calmania uh, 2 on the Twitch stream uh, uh, on Wednesday night, the NXT AEW live uh, Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Dan Black Attack. And I'll be directly addressing Adam Letterman for his attack on Hassan. Um, I will say the number one contender, Hassan. I will say, you know, having you guys here, I'll say that uh, Hassan, I don't know if you guys knew this, uh, but Hassan is okay. Uh, He's very badly injured, has a cracked orbital, um, uh, which is a common MMA injury. And, um, and uh, yeah, so we're getting more information about that, but he's, he's out of the hospital. He's home. He's, you know, I can talk to him. He's doing all right. uh, All things considered. Now with you guys here, I feel like I kind of, you know, you guys are, I mean, you guys both know Adam Letterman super well. And uh, you guys kind of, you know, you, we, you know the Hassan situation. Do you have any words to say about that? And then, Jason, I'll have a question for you in a second. Well, Arlen, you, I mean, your best friend since childhood, since you grew up, has been Adam Letterman. You probably more than anyone in the world knows him uh intimately right and yeah. Adam, for people who don't know adam letterman he did submit to the cow title shot challenge and he submitted i took him under deep consideration he was the basically the runner up of it and uh but hassan ultimately was the better pick and i went with hassan and adam letterman did not take that lightly and he attacked hassan in sirius xm studios yeah and i barely got out of there no one no one even asked me how i'm doing it's it's disgusting it's insulting honestly is that how you see it because a lot of people i mean we'll get back to arlen but while we're going into it a lot of people have been saying shebs that it was kind of it's the second time that a beat down from letterman's happened that you've came out unscathed so you're saying people are upset because twice that they know about something really bad was happening and i made sure that I didn't get affected by it. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to get affected by Corona. I'm not affected by the stock market going down. My whole livelihood is predicated upon not being affected by bad shit that hits other people. So yeah, I see bad things coming. I go the other way. I got to protect number one. I didn't, I didn't orchestrate anything. All I did was I saw a bull in a China shop and I said, oh, fuck, here comes Letterman. I know what this is about. I had no idea how he got in the building. But once those fucking punches came raining down, I said, time for me to get the hell out of there. And let me tell you something. For all the people who question my loyalty to the podcast, I have one thing to say. What have you done for the podcast? What have you ever brought to the podcast? I'm looking at, I don't know, 
every single person in the Facebook group, name one person who's done more for this show than me. Dan, I know a lot of people don't know in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, name one person who's actually helping you with this thing more than I am. I give more blood, sweat, and tears than anyone else, even terrible Tulo, even your co-hosts, and by, by your co-hosts, I mean your backup co-hosts, because I'm not there all the time. No one does more than I do for the show. No one is more loyal to the show. You know it. Yeah, All no, dude, that is a hundred percent. That is a hundred percent true. But when you, I'm just saying, when you see the video, you know, I think about how, if I was in that situation and someone c- who came in like an Adam Letterman and in front of your face starts attacking an innocent, uh, an innocent man like that, and you have the positioning to maybe pull him off or at least say anything, you were pretty quiet. It sounded like you got right out of dodge. Uh, I don't know. It's a little. I don't know. It's a little interesting to me. No? Suspect? Let me tell you something. Is that at least an understandable uh, criticism, Shebs? Yeah, look, again, I I don't know what else I need to say. When things look dicey, Shebs makes nicey. I get out. I take care of myself. That's it. I mean, I'm sorry. What, What was I supposed to do? Try to stop this attack. Letterman's a bigger man. Hassan's bigger than both of us. He should be able to handle Letterman easily. He saw him too. Things got heated, and I said, look, I'm too important to this show. I'm too important to you, Dan. I'm too important to risk injury. I got to make sure Calmania happens. Yeah, that's true. I, mean, I, w- I want to defend two people right now. The first yeah. one is Shebs, and that's rare. But I'm going to defend him because I agree that Hassan should be able to handle himself. I mean, you got two... Two guys in the heavyweight division here. They don't need special assistance. He doesn't need a, a defender. He doesn't need an advocate. Letterman can handle his business, and Hassan should be able to handle his as well. If you truly uh-huh. believe he's the number one contender and he deserves what you've granted him, then he should be able to handle himself inside the ring and outside the ring. And I don't think that's Sheb's responsibility. That's the most that Jersey said, response I, I, I have ever heard. It's a Jersey yeah. response. I mean, we're talking about a heavyweight bout here. He was in the Why middle did- of an, an interview over uh, on the podcast at Sirius XM. Okay. He wasn't, it wasn't like he was in the ring and Letterman didn't say, Hey, Hassan, let's, let's do this. And this business really had nothing to do with Letterman. Frankly. Keep your head on a swivel, man. At all times. I mean, look, it's, it's, look, it is. Let me ask you a question. If you walk down the street and get hit by a car, is that Sheb's fault? No, no, it's not. All right. Look, all I can say is Sheb's, you make a great point. You're my best friend for God knows how long, basically my brother. And, uh, you do help this podcast in ways people don't even know. And And by the way, I don't care if they don't know because you know. Yeah, and, and you handle your business the way you handle your business. That's almost none of my business in a this way. This conversation you know I mean? started, though, because you asked me about Letterman, and yeah. now I want to defend Letterman because wow. Wow. that's wow. my ride-or-die guy. And I will tell you right now, there is no one, no one out there that I trust more to handle their business than Adam Letterman. And I think you made a grave mistake, Dan, by choosing Hassan. I mean, I, I, and I'm not saying that's not I a mean, threat. Come on. Hassan was the obvious Hassan, bro. He was the, ob- did you see the guy? He was I a mean, great choice. Look, I saw him get his ass kicked by Letterman. And I also I mean, saw <laughs> Letterman put up, put up a formidable uh, uh, fight against you and handle his business. And so I don't think it's quite as open and shut as you're making it, Dan. Um, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, forget about Letterman's capabilities in the ring. Letterman outside the ring is, is a killer, as evidenced by his behavior here. And he is, he is clever. He is stealthy. He, he gets it done. He gets wow. the job done. This and is I shocking. just think you. All right. What's shocking about it? I, I mean, mean, listen, I hear your You point. know me, and I know Letterman. That's it. I got to come correct here on this podcast. Wow. All right. Well, well but also to be fair, just, just to put things in perspective, Dan, I mean, wh- look, Letterman. I don't know if he was going to try to lay a finger on me or not, but he didn't. I got out of there unscathed. He hasn't hurt you. He hasn't hurt Arlen. He's really done nothing despicable except take out somebody 
that was in and the way the of the top. Supposed the number one contender. And to right. me, that then says there's a new number one contender, baby. Yeah, but right. he's also saying that online, he's saying things that, you know, this is not the end of it. And, and he's going on and on. And Yeah, and, but look, and, honestly. Listen, you guys see it, different, do you see it differently. Like, I don't think – I think that if Adam Letterman wanted back in the title picture, then that's one conversation we could have had. All right. I think but he tried to have that conversation to, with you. He tried to get back in your way. You said put the challenge out. He answered the challenge. Cut a great promo. By the way, I don't even know what's my favorite phone promo. I'm not saying it was the best, but he tried to do it the way you wanted it done. You know, I think Joe Kibler had a great promo. I think – Incredible promo from him. You know, loved what I saw at Jerk Mills. There's, there's just so many great – and so many other ones that we don't even need to mention here right now. Um, but Hassan's was – Look, I know what you dug about it. I mean, he came with respect, and it was like a responsible era type type challenger. Like, I think that you got really yeah. wrapped up in this responsible era, and he was like the only one who was like nice and not talking shit. And you know, he is a pretty responsible guy. He's made some great changes in his life, got really big and strong, and everything like that. However, as far as putting asses in seats, I mean, I think Letterman's done you a service. Well, I think he's reignited the up. best. You're saying I got wrapped up in the in the responsible era. Let me tell you about the responsi- the era of responsibility. I would just like to say that all I was in that respect is ahead of the curve. I mean, we're truly living in the responsible era right now. Dan is Dan is home, falling in love with right his own thing. booking. That's what's going on here. Okay. This you guy is in it's love fine. with his own booking. I feel like for the for listen, let's move on, talk about some some, some wrestling <laughs> stuff. Uh, and let's I think we're at the first place and, and and my situation, I will address Adam Letterman directly on my twitch stream tomorrow night twitch.tv slash dan black attack um and uh during AEW and nxt starting at 5 p.m pacific standard time 7 p.m eastern standard time um and if you guys uh have more to say there you can pop in on that twitch stream then but i think i'd like to move and discuss uh calmania's sister show wrestlemania uh which uh has now officially been moved to the performance center with kind of a wrinkle uh it, it'll be only essential personnel there and it will still happen on april 5th but some rumors reporting and arlen I, I don't know if you even saw this that they're really gonna do it june 5th in madison square garden <laughs> and what are you guys thinking what are your thoughts i think that's i mean dude it's wrestling man who gives a fuck about rumors it's all rumors that's clearly bullshit they're doing the performance there is a lot of misinformation floating around in the time of coronavirus the most deadly to our potential health being about wrestlemania obviously right and i think we need to keep an eye on what's real what we've been told and what we've been told is that wrestlemania will happen as scheduled in the performance center now I have read a lot of reports about, um, you know, some kind of uh, uh, disconnect internally, which, which makes sense because look, if you just, if you just look at the facts, doing it in the performance center, it solves a few problems, right? From a storyline perspective, from a programming perspective, you get WrestleMania that we're all still going to watch it. And I'm sure the, the at home viewership will be probably bigger than, than normal. Um, However, uh, w- what you lose is obviously selling tickets and not a few tickets, but we're talking, you know, depending upon the arena, anywhere from 50 to a hundred thousand tickets. Right. And so, you know, it, 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 it is material. And I think we can all say for having watched the raw, the SmackDown that took place in the performance center. I mean, look, it, it, it leaves something to be desired. I, I, I want to, I don't want to go overboard because every other sport is canceled and I, I thank my lucky stars that wrestling is still going on, but certainly uh, it was really cool that they held a, a new Royal rumble in the middle of raw this week. I it thought was that awesome. Was pretty awesome. Uh, I like how they keep saying uh, something you've never seen before. And then they cut to something I've seen before for yeah. sure. Well, you know, you brought up a point. We'll go back to what you said before, but while we're talking, I don't want to forget this point. Triple do we need Triple H to constantly open up every show just being like, this is what we do. It's our lifeblood. <laughs> we well, this is live for this. I eat, breathe, and sleep. These guys are going to do what they do when they do it, and you need it, and that's it, and here is what it is. Like, it's always like, what are you doing, bro? Well, that's a classic wrestling thing that we've got. So he did it once, and I it may worked. have been there the it first worked. time he did it. You guys it was were there. Incredible. 
It was awesome when he that did was it at NXT, NXT takeover Brooklyn. in Brooklyn. When yeah, he- because he hadn't really like come out, you know. So like, I think that when he when he appeared, it was like I am the maker. Right, but I'm just saying. So they did it once. Goosebumps. Legit got goosebumps. It was an incredible promo. It was awesome. So Triple H. I mean, look, man. I don't need to get into Triple H right now. You know how I feel about Triple H. My record on Triple H has been. Clear from the beginning. Um, you know, he's a top guy out of respect, but as far as top guys go, he's at the very, very bottom. Uh, fantastic executive. Barely moved the needle for me as a wrestler. He's just, at best, he's a concrete wall you could hit a tennis ball against. If you're great, you could have an okay match with him. And at worst, he's just Roman Reigns with more muscles who fucked the, bo- the, do- the boss's daughter. Uh <laughs> Well, that's a really harsh uh, uh, criticism of Triple H. But, yeah, I mean, we're not talking about him as a wrestler, though. We're just talking about him at the beginning of TakeOvers being like – Well, yeah. but that's because he's a corny dude. You have to understand, he's corny. That, he loves wrestling so much that he has made it his life, and that's what makes him awesome. But as a guy, guy's pretty corny. I mean, let's look at the stables. Degeneration X. In hindsight, they do not hold up. They're terrible. They're way worse than the NWO. Rug, Billy Gunn, fucking X-Pac, and Triple H. That's a bad stable, okay? Triple H, lame. Evolution, very lame at the time. The jean jacket with the leather fucking yeah. leather jacket, sledgehammer, and Lemmy mustache, lame. Throughout history, this guy sucked. Okay. Uh, I don't even want to go there right now, but uh, obviously some good merits there. I would talk about Mania being canceled. We're saying that there, there's a lot of rumors out there. Arlen completely discarded the thinking it might be in MSG, and there's, there's any sort of insurance. It. Right. So you think that's nonsense. Wrestling, it's the only reason I would think, like, in my brain, I'd be like, no, no obviously no chance, but no chance in hell, as a matter of fact. But I am like, it's so hard to imagine WrestleMania. I mean, we've been the five of them in a row, and they're going to have those caliber of matches in the performance center with no one there. It's like, it makes me think Vince has a backup plan. Right, right. That, that's reasonable, actually, right? because it really is going to lose a lot of the juice with no live crowd. I mean, I watched Raw this week. Right. There's a little, it, it's kind of cool when Edge did a promo. It just feels like it's Edge unplugged. You know, yeah. it just seems like a, a nice, intimate uh, acoustic set. It's yeah. an acoustic set. But I can't, But Mania, yeah, without the, the noise of the crowd, the pop, what are we doing? But that sort of adds something to the experience. I mean, we talk about the many layers of what makes wrestling great. There's the product on screen. There's the drama behind the scenes. And the other thing is that the crowd really is a part of the show, too. So to take them out... It might not be worth it. So that's a good point by you, Dan. But I just think that the show must go on. Another tenant of Vince is the show must yeah. go on. Like, we're going to do Mania, and it's going to be terrible, and we're going to get through it, and then we're going to do SummerSlam. And that'll be where it's going to be right. in that bigger show this year. Yeah. The one thing I will say about a potential Mania with nobody in the crowd, I think wall-to-wall across the board, that will be bad. Certainly worse yeah. than yeah. if there was a crowd. The only thing that might benefit from a completely empty arena, which is one of the most important things in Mania, by the way, Undertaker's entrance. I feel like if there's no crowd there, yeah. there's no buffer zone here. This guy could do anything. He could be flying through the chairs. He could be getting pulled by a team of sled horses down the aisles. There could be fire and pyro and darkness and bats. Like There could be an arena full – of uh, essential staff of druids. The druids <laughs> count as essential staff. Absolutely. Uh, all the druids. So Mania druids. Will, will suffer, but Taker's entrance could benefit from a totally empty arena. He's going to have COVID-19 druids. Uh, but so, uh, folks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just have such a hard time believing that Vince is going to allow this to happen. But... Uh, Dude, a WrestleMania in the performance center. I know, look, it's a global pandemic. You know what I mean? But it also seems like the story's on track. Like, they're, 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 the pacing of these stories is these matches are happening April 5th. So I'm inclined to believe it. Well, look, man, it's, again, one of the, you said Vince McMahon, you said it's hard for you to think of him having a show to nobody. I'm saying it's hard for me to think of Vince as not just putting his head down barreling through it and say the show must go on. I mean, that's one of the tenets of the Carney lifestyle that is wrestling. You just do the show. Absolutely. You, got to pay, you book the date. 
So also in hindsight, though, there is some sort of perhaps cachet to be able to say when you look back at all the WrestleManias throughout history. There's a cachet to say. There's a cachet to say that was the year where there was no fucking crowd. Like, do you remember that? Like, something that – the other thing that – Absolutely. Is, when it's at its worst, sometimes something amazing happens that you didn't even see coming. When, it's, when things are looking great, sometimes it just falls flat on its face. You really got to un- expect the unexpected. You can't really bank on anything – except for that wrestling is bad. And sometimes, no matter how bad it gets, something great happens. So, yeah, Empty Arena sounds terrible. But I think if any company could somehow make, even if it's just one incredible once-in-a-lifetime WrestleMania moment happen because of this situation, right. it will all be worth it. In 20 years, we're not going to be bummed that we didn't get to go. We're going to be like, yo, that was the year where they did it with no crowd. It was legendary. Uh, um. <laughs> Bray Wyatt. Let's talk about Bray Wyatt for a second. You, you heard of him? Never heard of him. All right, so SmackDown. Uh, Rotunda? Absolutely. Uh, you can check out his – that's what his Instagram uh, handle is. That's what his name is. He's still uh, – yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, his, that's what his Instagram handle. His name is The Fiend. Okay, but so here's the deal. Bray Wyatt. Wyndham Rotunda. He – I can't see, I sing his praises a lot on this podcast and I just will just continue. I felt like his promo on Friday against Cena on SmackDown was so fucking money. Uh, but forget about the words of the promo. I would like to ask you your opinion on the booking um, next, but when he, he, I can't think of another performer, even with edge cutting that promo this week, which I thought was a great promo. And Randy cut a great promo two weeks ago. Edge unplugged. Edge unplugged. When Bray just like at the end of his promo to Cena is like, like let me in, John. Like I'm like I get fucking the chills, man. I'm like this guy is such a great, powerful theater stage actor, and I don't. I still yeah. to this day don't think we've seen. I can't think of another performer who does it like he does it. I mean, look. We live in a day and age where there's so much wrestling. There's so much content. There's so many performers. There's so many great performers that you Tremend- really got a tremendous be- amount of performers. There's a tremendous facility for performers. <laughs> yeah. And it's really the people who truly possess greatness that move the needle for me. Right. So Bray Wyatt has had what I would call for his talent level, probably the worst booking in the history of anyone in the company. Right. But for his talent level, I mean, the ratio. Right. But he does something that no one else can do actively today across any indie across any major no one can do what this guy does is it he, act he can act yeah he, he, and by the way he acts so good man he's yeah. just great he's, he's a he could be an oscar winner he could win the academy award one day i don't think he will right but I think he's got the chops and i mean it's not just the acting but the physicality in the ring it matches the performance He's the total package, man. He's the Jamie total Lee. Package. Speaking of the total package, Jamie Lee. <laughs> My wife in the mix here. Jamie, did you find chicken? I know. We're having trouble <laughs> finding chicken. Got to get that plant-based lifestyle. All right. Anyway, here's the thing. So I, I would like to – I, I want to talk about the Cena Bray storyline, okay? Okay. So they're going with an angle that – John Cena is the reason for the fiend existing and the reason for Bray's shitty booking, honestly. And they're saying that from that loss at 30, 30, at WrestleMania 30, Bray has been on a downward spiral since. And he said, I heard the voices in my head. I was tortured by the voices in my head until I listened. And then that's when I started feeling good. And that's when I think is when he started the fun house and the fiend gimmick, uh, or not gimmick for him. It's a, a lifestyle choice. He lives or, the gimmick. He lives the gimmick. Right. So it's- where he gave into like that character and it's all, uh, is from his loss. Um, and then Cena's whole angle with why he accepted the challenge is because he thinks that Bray Wyatt's another, in a, he's, he's a guy who's in the way of younger talents. He's not the future. He's another guy who blames all his failures on, uh, on Cena, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you think? 
I mean, I don't know. I, can't I guess here's my question. To you. I'll make it more specific. How do you feel about Bray Wyatt's entire feed gimmick being based around his loss to John Cena? That's a, it's fine writing. I got no problem right. with that. He just look the line of "I was tortured by the voices till I get till I listen to him." That's a great line. I mean, that's right. awesome. Right, so that's great. I mean, it doesn't matter who the fuck it's about. It happens to be about Cena. It could be about his loss to the under. It could have been lost, lost right. to anybody. But Cena is a big. The thing about Cena is his, his stardom is 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 so high, his star power is so large that you can take a whole character and make the Genesis story around him. You know, absolutely. Why? And look, like, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be Cena. It doesn't. It's just the top guy who's on all the mugs. You know, like, they let that guy beat me even though I was better than him. I mean, it's the same thing as CM Punk, if you think about it. It's the same thing as the pipe bomb. It's not, it's Cena because it's Cena, but it doesn't have to be Cena. It's just, it's the company. It's the status quo. It's the way things are. It's the machine. It's like, this guy is the chosen one. All the kids buy his merch. So the company does whatever they, you know, whatever he wants. That type of vibe. Right. So, yeah, it's Cena. And Cena's big enough to base that character around, but... But also being the top guy of the top company, whether it's Cena or Hulk Hogan or whoever, that's what this promo is about. It's about that keeping him down. Right. Uh, I think it. I think it works. I think it works. The, it works. But the only thing I was saying on another episode, I don't like. There's some stuff. People being like, "Oh, that's why it was good that Goldberg. He lost to Goldberg because it's like part of this story." Like, ah, he didn't need to lose to Goldberg. No, they're going with the Cena Fiend storyline, which right. is a great storyline. Yeah. Separately, they got here by botching a completely different storyline. There was a completely different angle going, and they didn't know what to do with Fiend or Bray at WrestleMania. And this is the thing that I've said to you since the beginning of The Fiend. And I said, look, what I'm worried about here is he's a monster heel, and they're not going to know where to go with him. Whenever you're a monster heel, and you're just – when you're taking five curb stomps and winning your match and, like, kicking out, you are a monster heel, the likes of which we've never seen. Umaga comes to mind. Original run Kane. If you mean you're manga, un- you manga. Yeah, if you're you an un- if your whole persona and presence is based upon the fact that you are a unstoppable monster and you will ravage everybody no matter what, where the fuck you go? Because at some point you have to lose, especially if you're the champ. They got away with doing it with Andre the Giant. You know how they got away with doing it for Andre the Giant for 15 years, making him an unbeatable heel. Well, not a heel, but an unbeatable monster character. They got away with making him unbeatable for legit 15 years because they never put a strap on him. Because if you have the title on a guy and this guy can't lose, right. that belt cannot get off of him for any reason, right? right? So I knew they were painting themselves into a corner with Bray Wyatt. I knew they weren't going to be able to – look, it's like when you watch a show like Sopranos or Lost and you're like, wow, this is such a cultural touchstone. There's right. no way they're going to know how to end this thing without it being fucking terrible. Right. Well, that's what happened with the Fiends title. Right? right. It was a masterpiece. It was a Sopranos. And just like that show, they couldn't figure out how to end this thing without it being terrible. So they did it in an awful way. But again, now they're it's wrestling. Right. So it's like, cool. We had to do the best move at the moment, which was like, we don't know what to do with this at WrestleMania. Let's just get rid of it. They got rid of the belt. And now they're like, hey, that never happened. Now you're Harlan wrestling. is uh, back uh, in the mix. Uh, uh, angle scene. The F is going on here. Arlen is back. Um, Arlen, how was your sushi? It was actually really good, but I got to tell you guys something pretty yeah. wild. True sign of the times. The delivery bag has my delivery guy's body temperature on it. Wow. wow. Yeah. Major. Major yeah. developments. Wow. I'm curious about this. Let me ask you this. In New York City, we have the plastic bag ban, but plastic is also very sealing it's very listen to me right now all bets are off i got a push notification today that alternate side of the street parking is (laughs) off for the next i mean everything's going haywire wait who pushed that notification to you are you like a parking app no i actually um just in case you're curious you can be a part of these uh you can text c-o-v-i-d to like uh you know, I'm not two texting nine, six, COVID. I'm not, he's not in my context. He's six not nine two six nine two. Here's the I'm notification. The Alternate side parking rules suspended March 18th to the 24th. Big news, but guess what? Payment at parking meters remains in effect. In effect. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're talking. We're talking. Uh, well, all right. Let's go. Let's let's jump over to a new topic. Let's talk about 
uh, this Dolph Ziggler and Otis feud. Uh, I know Arlen, because you're a massive Otis guy. Are you prepared to make Otis Dojovic one of your guys yet? Not yet. No. No. What? I thought he already was one of your guys. No, he's in the on deck. I take it much more seriously than you guys do. You're loosey goosey with this one of my guys business. I, you have to earn your way in. The two guys in the on deck circle for me are Otis and uh, Angel Garza. Yeah. Uh, Angel Garza is also in my, one of my guys uh, on deck circle. Uh, but did you guys see Ziggler tweet out? He, he posted, he Instagrammed a, a pic with Mandy Rose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's great. That's great work by him. It's he good. should be with Mandy yeah. Rose. I think that's pretty fun. I think he's out of her league. I got to be honest. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, uh, but I, I do think it worked a lot of people. He was getting a lot of, like, death threats and shit on there. People were very uh, who's, up Who's arms. getting work? They thought, they thought Otis had her in the bag? It's what people thought, many people. Um, okay. I got to so, gotta tell you something, Dan. Yeah. New topic for me. Yeah. If you're going to start doing uh, uh, video podcasts, yeah. uh, get your house in order, pal. Uh, what's on your couch? This is not Every be blanket video. in your house? This is not video. Uh, the blanket. Why, the- why would you not distribute this as video if there's a video record? I don't understand what kind of a podcaster you are. It, it's ass backwards. Okay. First off, Arlen, don't come on the <laughs> would, podcast. Give me the explanation. Everything. Give me the okay. explanation. Secondly, you have a video I'm recording. I'm positive you? that you are the worst boss of all time. I'm 100% <laughs> Arlen, positive. Like, there's a lot of ins and outs and what have you. There's no, they got to work out some tech <laughs> aspects. I mean, well. every excuse. Dan's got every, and none of them are real. It doesn't even make sense. Direct question. We're not. We if decided you have to this as a video, Zoom. why would you not put this on YouTube? Tell me why. We, we can put it on YouTube. But the <laughs> reason my couch is covered is because it is raining here a bunch, and I have two dogs, and I have a brand new couch. So also, I cover the couch. I the also. Other reason, the other reason it's covered is because it's been covered for two years. That's the second before, reason. Brand new. Before the Dan couch, had either one of those the couch, the, the couch is brand new. Okay, the couch is brand new. Uh, secondly, this, we were recording the pod last second. You wanted to switch to zoom and, uh, yeah. And you come in, you only criticize and you're a piece of shit is what you are. Okay. Now listen, can we listen man, listen, wrestling? man. First of all, here are the facts. You were trying to record a phone call. It sounded terrible. Okay. Number one, it sounds better now. Number two, you now have a video of this that you can post on YouTube. I mean, Truly a guy who knows nothing about podcasting five years into this. Okay, look, guys, I know this is a nice heated topic of debate between who knows nothing about podcasting and who knows yeah. everything about podcasting. Well, it's because Arlen knows nothing oh. about wrestling, so that's the only okay. thing he can, <laughs> that's okay. the only thing that he can right. add. But so let's Everyone, bring up – The thing is, I know everything about wrestling and about podcasting, so what I'm going to say is this is – becoming sort of an iffy Nawadaway situation where it's a colossal waste of my time. So let's move on from this conversation Absolutely. and get into, I'd love to talk about this, this ghost draw that we saw. Sh- Absolutely. Great peacekeeper. Where I was going. I went to Otis to be nice to Arlen. Cause I know he's an Otis Mark, but it's fine. Let's move off. Let's talk about takers. Look on raw taker. I, you're going to go right. To, I mean, that's the main event, man. You're going right to that. <laughs> well, let's yeah. talk about, let's talk about Stone Cold's promo first. Then we'll get to the taker look after. Yeah. You guys don't want to talk about Rumble again? No, we already talked about Rumble. Stone Cold's <laughs> promo, what did you guys think about it? I thought Stone Cold's promo was super weird. Well, I we- think they're all struggling. I mean, he went to four corners. There's no one in the arena. You know, I mean, obviously, it's awkward to be just – it's just you and a cameraman. There's no feedback. I mean, it, to me, I, I, I felt like that was like doing stand-up in an empty room. It's like almost yeah. an impossibility. Yeah, well, I- look. No, Edge, I mean, Edge did a promo. And I think I thought Edge's promo was sick. It was Edge, Adam Copeland unplugged at the Performance Center. It was Edge, great. Edge's promo was fantastic. I loved it. Stone Cold, look, here's the deal. I loved it. Uh, Stone Cold is so charismatic, and it's just great to see him. Like, that's my thought, is that I thought that it was fun to see him. I did think this was real. The rating thing with Byron was very unnecessary, weird, and not really properly uh, – set up like i was kind of confused by it i I have a question for you dan because you had made a point to me a long time ago about about the rock where he hit some kind of an era where he was like i rock like you know ironic rock 
or he yeah. was kind of post post rock. Yeah. I mean, it's, it feels well, like Hollywood, Stone Cold Hollywood rock. We had third person rock, and then once he started kind of breaking the yeah, he, once he started breaking the wall, uh, hitting into fourth wall rock. When he started being like, "All right, he, he, I'm a character," he started smiling and not just coming out dead serious, talking about how expensive his clothes are. Uh, we kind of lost some of that, but I do think you know Stone Cold was having fun. It was an empty arena. It was fine. I thought Byron was like, I don't know, like what he was rating his jokes. It was I don't know. Well, Byron also gave it a very enthusiastic, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Um, look, man, there's a, there's a tide coming here. Yeah. And it's that Stone Cold, when you look back on this guy, I don't know, man. I mean, this was one of the stupidest promos I've ever seen. This 316-day shit was, was, was really it not was, entertaining. It was, it I, was, thought it was, I thought it was terrible. It was. Dude, it was terrible. It was weird. Clearly, they handed him those cards. Gabe told him the thing, and then he went out there. I'm not even holding it against him. Yeah, you know? but you know what? I just wasn't interested. He dropped no. a couple of what's. I mean, I was talking about this with Velveteen's little cousin. The what chant is perhaps yeah, – it, does, it doesn't work in an empty arena. No. It doesn't work in a full arena. It's I mean, it definitely stars. doesn't work in an empty arena. It's, no, it's crowd wait, feedback. Wait, to be fair, his what – I thought his what's were pretty funny because he was like, no one can respond. There was nothing <laughs> funny about this entire thing. It was so juvenile. It sounded like a Jeff Foxworthy routine. He's like, well, it might be 316 day. If you give your boss a kick in the stomach, yeah, it might be 316 day. It was hacky, terrible nonsense. Agree. And I don't think – and you come in here and say you love it just because it's Stone Cold. This guy is getting – Yeah, that's where I'm at. Guy is getting Listen, a buy. That's where I, I'm at. Like, by the way, this guy's chugging IPAs. There is nothing cool or badass about chugging a fucking IPA. All right. The fact that his beer is an IPA also is kind of rubbing me the wrong way. I hate IPAs. It's, I it's actually it's a weird choice. Arlen's an IPA guy, guy who, probably, right? Arlen, you got to be an IPA guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Mike Goldstein here. He drinks yeah. IPAs because it has higher alcohol content. It just gets you drunk back faster at the same value. Yeah. Doubt and Belgian beers both have higher alcohol content than that. So that's um, a bad argument. But, but I, I just want to uh, – I, I got to call you out, Trebs, because <clears throat> let's take it at face value. Let's just say it sucked, right? I, I still, yeah. you, you're sort of calling Stone Cold's reputation into question here. You're like, when we look yeah. back, I'm like, there's nothing that is, he's going to do or that's going to happen at this point that is ever going to alter the fact that he's on the Mount Rushmore, man. I mean, he did, he did enough in a tight window that it doesn't matter what he does now. He I can know, suck I all know. he wants. Look, I'm saying I can't really fathom taking him out of not just the Mount Rushmore, but yeah. the number one slot. This guy is still my number one wrestler of all time. I don't even like the guy. I'm just saying He's, every time I see him, I'm like, ah, I don't like this, man. This ain't, I, this ain't I, I, I like any stunner. I, I, I got to see a stunner on a Raw, <laughs> and I got to watch the Royal Rumble again. Something. He should have gave Becky a stunner. That would have been fucking cool. He was like, hey, last time I saw you, you gave me a stunner. And she's yeah. like, oh, well, I'm here to celebrate. He should have gave her a stunner right back. It would have been amazing. No one looks bad. No one looks weak. It's actually kind of funny because he has a history of domestic abuse. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Well, look, uh, I, I don't condone that statement at all, but here's what I'll say. Uh, I don't think you have to condone the statement. It's just uh, a, it's a factual statement. I mean, he, he said has... it, it would be funny because he has a history oh, of that. I, that yeah, I don't okay. agree with. Uh, I meant like, funny like, like, oh, isn't that funny? Like, oh, that's funny. Not like I've been no, laughing. I don't Come think that, but okay. But here's what I'll say. I think that what I, the reason I gave it a pass is like, this is what makes WWE shit is they over script. Now, Stone Cold came out when he – the last time he came back, I don't know what that was for, but the last time he came back, he kind of just went in ring and just talked about nothing, and I loved it. He just rambled. He just, I, I like when he's like, I got a like new pickup podcast. truck. Yeah, absolutely, like that. I like it. It's, he, I like the way he sounds. I would make my phone sound like, can I make Siri talk to me like Stone Cold? That's what I want. I like the way he sounds. But this segment felt like Vince was like, we got to write him a segment. And so it was like, yeah, whatever. This is dumb. I'm just saying, keep a careful eye on every time you see Stone Cold do something anymore. Yeah. You want it to be good, so you think it's good. It's mostly just like, ah. Oh, no, boy. I didn't think it was good. It's just, he's, he's just kidding. Dude, but he has clearly, on, on a relative basis of, of great wrestlers, has had the worst post-wrestling career by a mile. But look, I mean, look, again, I don't want to call his legacy into question. That's not what this is about. But the what chant is the, one of the worst things to happen in wrestling. He had about two or three hot years. And then otherwise, it was two-man power trip. It was being buddies with Vince. It was a bunch of shit that kind of sucked. 
Okay. And but then those two or three hot years, and they were the I know, but people it was knocked, white hot, baby. People knock the rock for having a short career. Stone Cold's career was even shorter, if you ask me. Even not not before he became the number one guy. I mean, obviously his career in ECW and WCW and around the world before that is longer. But as far as like dominance and greatness, it's shorter than the rocks, or at least the same size. He took his ball and he went home because he didn't want to lose to Brock Lesnar. What kind of motherfucker does something like that? That shows no respect for the business. I'm just saying, I'm not ready to demote him out of the number one spot, but the people are talking on the streets. I got my ears to the streets. I'm the kink master. I'm the street whisperer. I know uh, what the people are saying. Uh, I'm the, I mean, you get a lot of unusual yeah. nicknames when combined. I'll say that. Well, I, I watched, will say I, that. I watched WrestleMania 17 uh, on the. On well, that's going to be the pinnacle. That's going to be the, the good times. That's yeah. The and the second you watch that, you'll just go back when, you know, when you just see him in all his glory. Even just the way the guy moves walking down to the song, walking down the ramp. And I don't think yeah. anybody's got to walk like that. Well, Dan, it's unfair. You know that Jimmy Johnston composed the song with well, the tempo to match Stone Cold's pace. Absolutely. Walk and then set the song. One of the greatest with musicians of all time. Yeah, but it's, it's not even that. It's the way he moves the, his head. Yeah, he's Actually, the Grammy Awards have been snubbing Jimmy Johnston. <laughs> yes, for without a doubt. Well, it's Jimmy Johnston and then Prince, hold, as far as I'm I hope so. <laughs> he's better than Prince. Yeah, I go Jimmy first and then Prince. It's close, but I go Jimmy I mean, they've had the same. It's, it, you know who has had the most hits of all time? Hall and Oates, the Beatles, and Jimmy Johnson. Wait, this is a great topic. Arlen, we talked about this. You know, like the end of at the end of 2019, it gives you your like most listened to songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you posted yours, and then yeah. it made me look at mine. Did you have any wrestling on yours? Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> what, what did you have? <laughs> well, no, no. no. My, my top five artists of the year was uh, Dave Matthews Band, and then um, it was. Um, uh, 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 Lady Gaga and uh, Brad and um, what's Bounce his name? Dave. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> because you listen to the shallow so many yeah, times. Too many times. <laughs> I bought the T-shirt. I have a one. Cooper. I have a Brad well, Cooper shirt. My my Jim number two Jim song Jim. last year was the Fiend. <laughs> the Fiend. The Let Me In song. It was my number Dude. two. I have, well, I have had, um, I've had Jericho's song on repeat. Well, but that's wow, me. what a year! My play was for the. You've had Judas on your mind. Judas, you had Judas in your mind. <laughs> the song's just called Judas. Yeah, of course I know what it is, bro. Everybody's Incredible listening work. to Judas. Shebs, what do you got to say about Judas? Go ahead, Shebs. My workout playlist when I go to the gym. <laughs> It's just Judas. By <laughs> it's, one, it's a one song playlist on repeat for the past three months. I'm not going to lie. I listen to it on repeat. Yeah. You have to. That <laughs> song cannot be taken one at a time. You got to take that thing in chunks. Let's talk in uh, chunks. Let, let's talk about Judas for a second. Cause it made me think about ju- so- wrestling songs that yeah. we talked about this this morning, Chevs, but not recorded. We got to get this down. And, and that gives you a little insight into what our combos are like. But this morning I was saying, here's wrestling. The only, difference, the only difference is sometimes the mic's on and sometimes the mic's it's, off. It's but we're, all, we're always arguing and talking about wrestling. Yo, four. All right. There's four songs that are probably four of my favorite songs. And I can't tell now. I couldn't tell if they're legitimately good or bad. Right? Right. One is Judas. <laughs> right. Uh, one that is- song is legitimately good. I've watched the music yeah. video multiple times. You mean the Jericho entrance video? Yeah, when he's like, no, 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 uh, it has a music video. Yeah, where he's he... like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I become, I become, I become. It. All right, Judas. Then Randy Orton, I hear voices. Song I just love, especially the no, no, the remix of that. <laughs> Tell your wife I said hello, Dan. Jamie's in the back. Yeah. Superman video. Jamie's in the back. All right, and then uh, uh, and w- I walk along. I do, I, wait, wait. I want to be clear. You're saying I hear voices, official or acoustic? Both, both. It depends on how my mood. You know what I mean? If I'm looking right. to play, I'm looking to cry. Uh, and then Edge song. And I'm so picky about the Edge song. Sometimes I'm driving to the gym. The one on Spotify is not the one that he enters to. It's got these shit drums up top. The vocals are redubbed. I go to YouTube and I play. Spotify <laughs> is terrible for yeah. wrestling music. Is it? Terrible for wrestling music. Terrible for mixtapes. If you want to hear, like, because I'm the street whisperer, I got my ears to the street. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and also you the kink master? Yeah, I'm no, the kink master, but I'm just, I know a great mixtape. I mean, 
you know, I'm trying to find the Lupe Fiasco friend of the people mixtape. It doesn't exist right. on Spotify or any of these services. Like really great mixtapes. How about the one, the, uh, the Meter Maid Sufjan one? I mean, you can't find this anywhere on these services. I got to tell you that the kink master and the street whisper, it sounds like a pimp you go to when you want like really unorthodox treats. Well, yeah. you see what I'm wearing? I if you've like got fun. exotic tastes. Well, you know, I am an acquired taste. So, so, all right. Are you saying that, can I play the Randy Orton theme song for a random person and then be like, play and then be like, hey, I like this song. Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's a genre of music that I call gym music, okay? It's early aughts, rap rock, or new metal, okay? It's stained Linkin Park, P.O.D., stuff like that, okay? Some bands are still making music like that, like Downstate, okay? But it's very much a sound of the early aughts, okay? So some people just don't like that genre of music. They're not going to like it. I don't like jazz, right? But I could, I, maybe I could listen to, like, one of the greatest jazz musicians of all time, like a Miles Davis track or something, right? If you don't like this genre, you're not going to like the Randy Orton song. Yeah. Okay. You will maybe like Linkin Park because Linkin Park is the greatest artist of this genre. They've actually made great songs sort of irrespective of genre within the genre. But the genre itself is pretty much hated by most people. Okay. Um, or at least most people we know. But like Metalingus, you know, that song that, that, uh, that, <laughs> on Ed's this day, that is a really good song. But I don't think it's as good as any song by Linkin Park. And I don't think it's as good as Judas by Fozzie. I think Judas by Fozzie is a great song. The meddling song. I got uh, on, my, on my steering wheel, this is not like an amazing feature or anything, but you got that like restart, you know, you could start the track over. So after the drums hit, it's like, on this day, I'll just start it again. I just like the beginning. Right. Of course. Uh, and, I, have a, I, have a, I have a random uh, question slash fact. Did you guys know System of a Down that everyone in that band is Armenian? Yes, and a lot of their songs are about the Armenian genocide. No, the, the singer is... Uh, but did you know that all Jewish, of them are Armenian? Jewish, Canadian. Yeah, they're all Armenian. You could tell because all their names end in I-A-N. That's the official mark of the Armenian. If the last name ends in I-A-N, they are an Armenian. Um, yeah, and they're I, mean, all, I, wasn't, I wasn't getting into the drummer's last name. The Lebanese, you know the, the singer is Lebanese, no? I believe it's pronounced Lebanese. Armenian. Oh. Okay. Let's Their music talk is about, about the Armenian genocide. They are very much an Armenian band. And right, really who knew? I didn't know that. Any Armenian you talk to, they could be a classic, classically trained pianist. They could be seven years old. They could be a 99-year-old grandfather. They They're all love System of Dan. Suey. It's a classic Sheb's generalization. That's a Trump statement right there. Every you know Armenian, doesn't matter who you talk to, young or old, their favorite band I mean, is System of a Down. What you guys always forget, though, is that I've got my ears to the streets. <laughs> I'm, How I'm, can I'm, we forget? You told us five minutes ago. I mean, it would be impossible to forget. With any semblance of diversity here, I'm actually Middle Eastern. I'm actually of foreign parents, okay? We, I go in a cab, and the guy's from Georgia or Uzbekistan, he's talking to me. Like, I'm from Uzbekistan. I know the people. I know Armenians. I work with Armenians. We're all in the same boat here. And when you're one of us, you know the differences. And I'm telling you, yeah. Armenians love System of a Down. All right, let's hit the two more topics and get out of here, all right? Jeff Hardy's back tattoo. Did you see it? There's no way, by the way, there's only two more topics. because we There's only two about- more because I'm leaving. We, got we haven't Jeff talked about Asuka, and we haven't talked about Taker. I'm talking about Jeff and Taker, and then I'm out. Jeff Hardy's back tattoo, honestly, just Google Ben Affleck's back tattoo. That's a way bigger story forever. <laughs> By the way, Ben, Aff- ben Affleck, I feel like that, came that was out the- and was like, I was on a bender. I, you know, it was a bad, it was a bad decision. And it's like, yeah, dude, that was your whole back. Uh, he, uh, Jeff Hardy's tattoo is cool, but it's Jeff Hardy. It's he's like, also Jeff Hardy. Like, what does it matter? Exactly. He's like, does, uh, like doing it, metal sculptures in North Carolina. Who cares? Right. It's you not bring up. Surprising. If you bring up uh, t- tattoos, she has no cells you- and deflects you over to Ben Affleck. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm trying to protect my man Cody from the inevitable <laughs> Cody's neck tattoo conversation, which I'm not yet prepared to defend. I haven't worked out my strategy yet. You're trying I, to I'm, justify It's like I'm it's ready, Cody I'm was doing such defend. great work, and then all of a sudden hits you with a real curveball. But you know what? Look, you it, it, is like, it is like Ben Affleck, who also had a major comeback, went on an incredible run, and yeah. then just to test the limits of it, was like, let me see if I could be Batman. 
It's like when you're doing too well, you right. kind of want to test the boundaries of what's possible. Well, it's, and it's Cody not, did it with that neck tattoo. It's self-destructive it's behavior. It's called ultimate validation. When you get ultimate validation, you, you don't think keep you can come up with an idea. You keep right. pushing it. Any idea in your head you assume is that's, that's an A plus because you've just been supremely validated by That's you. why Kanye is building our next great city. Kanye uh, Topless? No, you know, yeah. he's like, he's working on like a, a urban planning. He's going to like great. build a village. A complete fucking disaster. The guy's an idiot. <laughs> uh, speaking of complete disasters, Undertaker yeah. was in an empty arena. No, nope. uh, can we talk about Oscar? Can we talk about Oscar, uh, please? Like Oscar. She's like, you guys, well, this Taker thing. You guys, I love it. You're pushing it all the way it, to the end. It, it's the main event. Okay, it's, it's so Arlen, you know why you're so blown away by this Taker look? Yeah, because you don't remember when Big Show had that same haircut. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's that thing's an old. Let me tell you something. The least of my worries is that haircut. I'd like to start with the girdle. Well, okay. that's that's just I, his his uh, classic. No, uh, but here's the thing: if you singlet, wanted to just do pull that, down, right? No, no. But if you were worried that's about your girdle, thing. why yeah. wouldn't you just come out like with a singlet pulled down? Why would you wear the lip of spandex just wrapped around your belly? I mean, here's the thing, Arlen. You have to take this to the unitary executive theory, okay? Which is like, if Taker's doing it, yeah. then it's right and it's cool, right? It's like, if he's doing it, it's not a girdle. It's the singlet down, and that's actually a cool thing to do. It's fine because it's Taker. So, he did it. So, it's a thing now. so ipso facto, you thought Taker looked awesome. Let me tell you something. On the spectrum of Taker looks, this one does not... Hashtag move the needle for me, the needle mover. I've seen this guy look so much fucking worse. Wow, the so needle mover. Worse. That's that's great. You when when have you seen him look worse? He Let looked me. like a woman disguised <laughs> as a man. Um, I mean, it it was that look. I, it, look, there's so much. To I talk thought about he looked. He, I, I thought he looked awesome. Did you? Yeah, I thought he looked Come awesome. On. <laughs> now I don't sound so crazy now. What I about, thought he looked awesome. I said the, the, the dye job on his eyebrows alone was terrifying. Arlen, it's like you don't even know what wrestlers are. Yeah. <laughs> of course he's going to be wearing a girdle. Of yeah. course he's going to do it in a way that makes it look like it's some sort of muscle man activity. Of course he's going to have a shitty dye job on his hair, eyebrows, and probably his butthole hair. It's the fucking Undertaker. He's a wrestler. Yeah, the guy's absolutely. a redhead. He's you a never... natural redhead. Okay? The guy has a terrible dye job. He's not a redhead job. anymore. Depends who no. you talk to. Uh, hey, folks. Uh, but I think I think that uh, take, that hair. I, I like the I like the braid. That I tight, like the braid. That tight, tight shit braid yeah. down the side. Uh, but it was like back. Stevie Wonder. It starts. It starts in that Heyman zone. It, I think. I don't There's think the cap Wonder. was supposed to come off. Stevie Wonder has. 38 of those per square inch on his head. Taker has just the one. <laughs> it's like he's like American American badass kind of like a little bit. It, retired. Like, he's the retired American badass. But can you actually believe it's like, yeah, Taker came out, he beat up uh, Gallows and Anderson. I, yeah. I had fun with it. The weirdest thing about the segment I thought was Taker comes out and like he, he gets in the, the ring, table that weighs the table, and then they like faded to commercial. They did like yeah. a Star Wars swipe fade to commercial. It was, it was like awkward. I rewinded back to be like, did I did I skip ahead or did this go to commercial? Did I hit like, fade and go on my TV. He literally like the mic went under the table. He was like having. He's trying to find he it. Couldn't find the mic, so then Vince was probably like, "Go to commercial." He looks like an Vince, asshole. Go to Vince commercial. Was like, quick, quick, fade very slowly to commercial. I want to yeah, slow yeah. fade to commercial. Uh, and then uh, it looked good. But the thing is, like, it's kind of crazy. AJ is a guy who people consider old. And his whole angle is calling Undertaker old. And uh, this getting this match, Arlen, you, you missed this part of this conversation. But it's I just have a, such a hard time believing that this match is actually happening in an empty performance center. Like, it just seems – I'm like, man, you, you really th – think Taker's going to wrestle on that? Like, is he – you know what I mean? Well, ta I also feel like Taker's whole thing is the entrance. That's why I was saying, like, I said to you, you got to see Taker in an empty. Th there's something about Taker in an empty arena that doesn't make sense. You know, it was, I think that That's was part of the Stone Cold problem, too. It's like if you're not. He's not uh, summoned. Uh, he's not summoned by the not crowd. not a main roster wrestler coming for a special event that has no one there yeah. is a wild thing. It's very awkward. It's uncomfortable. Mark my words. 
the taker entrance. If it's I will a- mark Callaway your words. Mark, mean Mark Callis, my words. Callis, Callis. That entrance may be the only thing on the whole card that's actually augmented and bolstered by the fact that they're in a totally empty arena. I think all bets are off. They could do anything in there. <laughs> what is this? What does this, this the signify? This is the way I point now. All right. It's like a two, three point. That's you, the kink master and the street whisperer. Do you hear my words though? What I'm saying is that just think about the possibilities, endless possibilities. If they're not, if they're not sort of governed by there's other people and you can't use this area and that area, right. there's no telling what kind of theatrics they're going to need to shove into that entrance to make this actually cool. And Undertaker is known as the greatest enterer. He's the greatest pure enterer <laughs> in the WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's <laughs> certainly got a hell of an entrance. Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, well, I mean, we'll see. It's crazy. It's like, do you think they get the full paychecks to do a WrestleMania in the PC? I think the under or over, no. how many Druids will be in that entrance? Right. I'm seven at 36, double high, mark my words. Wow. Well, I, mean, I, I, t- I think Taker look cool. I was a little bummed that we didn't get more of the, like, wife angle. I imagine she probably doesn't want to travel, but they set up a whole thing about, like, Michelle McCool is the problems. Like, she, the whole angle they set up is based around Michelle McCool being the problem. She keeps forcing Undertaker to wrestle. That's why he didn't retire 10 years ago. That's what they established. It's like, I know why you keep wrestling. And she wants you dead, and I'm going to help her out. You know what I mean? So <laughs> well, rest, not- Wrestling logic is always the best. It's like, yeah. all right, let's start from the end and work yeah. our way backwards to how we make this make sense. But the cool thing is AJ said in that promo, he was like, I'm going to make sure in that ring you're dead. And they cut that out of all the packages they were showing for it. Like, maybe it's just too harsh for the package. Well, I think it's okay if you say The Undertaker because the guy literally dies six times a year. Like, the guy's right. gimmick is a dead man. So, But if you said that to, like, you know, Rollins or, like, uh, Cedric Alexander, it'd be like, whoa, cool, man, that's that's." Can I, can I point out one difference between the Big Show's uh, uh, hairstyle and Taker's interpretation of it? You may. I don't know if you noticed, but Taker also had – he sort of shaved the lower – the nether yeah. regions. He it raised, was, uh, he raised <laughs> the roof a little bit. I mean, which is wild because it's like if, if, you, if you got something that's heading back this way, it's receding from the front, why are you going to start receding it from the other side as well? He that's, just he has a small visor of hair at this point. That's back. actually why how the Nazis wound up losing the campaign in Europe because they had a front on the west and then <laughs> yes, they started. They were, they started they were fighting a battle on too many fronts. And they had two fronts. They were spread too thin, and I think we're all very worried for the Undertaker's hair, aka the Third Reich. Look, the also, Undertaker is going to make an entrance. I'm about to make an exit. I bid you guys adieu. I think Look. we uh, I think we have everything. Thank you, uh, the, uh, Shebs. It was good to talk to you, the Kink Master. Maybe we'll hear from you tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> he looks like Buffalo Bill. Uh, tough, tough look. <laughs> and uh, I was glad to hear your guy, both of your guys' perspectives on this uh, Adam Letterman and uh, Has- Has- Hassan situation, which, frankly, I was surprised by where you guys uh, landed here. And I will address it. Uh, I will address Adam Letterman directly on the Twitch stream tomorrow night during AEW and NXT at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, well, it's on Wednesday uh, when this comes out. So I'll say I'll give the date because uh, we don't even know what the dates are anymore. We don't know what day of the week it is. We're all in quarantine. But Wednesday, March 18th, 5 p.m. when AEW and NXT go on the air, our Twitch, my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Dan Black Attack. Um, we will uh, uh, be uh, talking uh, about the Adam Letterman situation, and I will address Calmania, and we'll watch uh, AEW and NXT, and we'll have a blast, and we'll head into uh, this new era of the podcast and of life, right? Right, Arlen? All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All you, right. Look, you look like you had something to say, but uh, guys – uh, more content coming, like I said, at the top of the episode, um, we're going to be posting a schedule of stuff that's coming out. Um, I'm going to be, uh, hitting, hit me up on that Twitch stream, more watch along parties. We watched pay view already a lot more stuff to come. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to make sure that we are all socially distant, but only physically, right? We're emotion. I mean, I'm I'm as emotionally connected to you as I've ever been. <laughs> Absolutely, which is to say, not much. Uh, everybody, <laughs> uh, listen. That uh, 
uh, check out bonus episodes on Patreon. And thank you for supporting the show. And everybody, uh, stay safe, stay inside, and keep watching Wrestling Kisses. <laughs>